2020 was just the beginning. First, it was the pandemic. Then the riots. What's up YouTube? I am Jake Weisler from the Full Time Filmmaker team and that was the trailer for my very first ever short film. We just posted the full film on our channel so you can head there to check it out. But in this video, I just want to talk about my experience filming this short and some of the big things I learned. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. We use their graphic tiles for almost all of our videos to really help our videos pop and stand out. And they have so much more than just titles. Storyblocks is the complete stock solution with over 1 million royalty-free, high-quality videos, audio tracks, images, After Effects templates, illustrations, sound effects, and so much more. With their affordable subscription plans, you can download any asset you want. And with their unlimited all-access plan, you can quickly try out multiple options and see what video or sound or title best fits your project. We all know what it's like when you're making a video and you just don't have the time or resources or whatever to get a certain shot or record a certain sound or make a certain music track or title and that's the need that Storyblocks saw in the industry and decided to fill. We'll drop a link below or just go to storyblocks.com slash Parker. Definitely check them out if you want to increase the production value of your videos. And thanks again Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video. First, a little backstory about me. Short films were what got me into filmmaking over 10 years ago. Me and my little brother used to go out in the backyard and film each other doing weird things make our family laugh. Then I started meeting other beginners like myself and we started collaborating and doing festivals, comedy sketches, short films, anything we could do to grow and I had a blast doing it. I took a break from filmmaking for a few years and when I did pick it back up, the priority was to make money. So I started filming weddings and that's what I did for about three or four years and I really enjoyed it. But this past year with 2020 being what it was, it gave me a lot of time to think about what my next steps were to grow as a filmmaker and also ask myself what our channel and our online school needed and I kept thinking about filmmaking, actual narrative directorial filmmaking. Our online course teaches everything there is to know about becoming a filmmaker, from knowing what camera you should buy, and what the best settings are, to landing high paying clients, and everything in between. But something that no one on the team had ever really done before was narrative filmmaking and storytelling. So I thought, yeah, that's something I used to love doing and something I would love to start doing again. And if we're gonna provide educational content for you about how we do something, first we need to learn that topic and learn it well. So I tasked myself with creating two or three short films so that by the end of this year, I can teach you how you can do the same. And Essence was my very first one. So I hope you enjoy Essence. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but take it easy on me. It was my very first one and I directed, produced, wrote, shot, and edited it all by myself and learn so much along the way so that my next one can be 10 times better. So how did I create Essence? When I knew I wanted to create a short film, I couldn't help but think about 2020 and everything that was going on in the world. And I remember thinking, what if 2020 was just the beginning? And I also knew that this would be a very low budget film and I didn't want to manage a huge ensemble or too many moving parts for my first attempt at a film. So I wanted to keep the cast to a very small minimum. But what type of stories can you tell with a very small two to three person cast? I guess a lot, but my first thought was a post-apocalyptic story. So I was vacationing at my sister's lake house and I remember thinking, what if that lake was the last freshwater lake in the world? What if water was the last resource that humans fought over? And I started scripting out this story about a man making his way to the last lake as his last attempt to stay alive by finding the last bit of water. Then of course, there needs to be a conflict. So what if another desperate man crossed in his path and what if both of those men were willing to do anything to survive? So that's how the initial concept went. I typed up the screenplay and I sent it to Parker and our producer Carter and they sent it off to some friends of theirs who had done this way more than me. And those people were able to give me some good feedback on my story that drastically helped the storyline make a lot more sense and helped cover up some of the glaring holes in my original screenplay and plot, which is one of the biggest things I learned from this experience. If there's one thing I took away from my short film and creating my short film, it's that for every job that needs to get done, 
there is someone out there who can do it way better than you. So utilize them, learn from them. Don't try and do it all yourself if you know you can't. So after the initial concept was complete and the screenplay was finalized, it was time to make plans to shoot it. The pre-production process took up about 80% of this project, and I think that's pretty average for any film. I had to find locations, actors, wardrobe, props, crews, extras, gear, and I really had no idea where to start. But I had a good friend, Kyle Abbott, who had done a few short films before, and I asked him if he wanted to be a part of this project because I needed someone to kind of guide me through this pre-production process. And he had some great connections with a wardrobe designer and knew of some great locations where we could shoot this film. For the actor, I already had a friend in mind to play the main role. My friend Isaac Lee from high school who got into film around the same time as me. Over the last 10 years, this guy has kept with filmmaking and has done a lot of acting. And the caliber of his performance and the range of what he could do with his emotions was exactly what I was imagining when creating this main character. So I asked him if he wanted to get the band back together and of course he said yes. And I could go on for hours about the importance of finding the right actor not just a good actor, the right actor. You need someone who can bring your vision and characters to life. A great script and wardrobe, crew and set and gear, doesn't matter if your actors are garbage. I think a perfect example of this is Clint Eastwood's 1517 to Paris. Amazing story, you have Clint Eastwood's direction, the best editors, costume designers, cinematographers, filmmakers in all of Hollywood, but he cast terrible actors. They weren't even actors, they were playing out the true story that they had lived. They were real people, and the reviews just say it all. You need solid actors to sell your vision. So of course I was stoked when Isaac said he would agree to be on this project, but I also still needed to cast an antagonist. I had no idea who I wanted to play this character. So I went onto our local Utah filmmakers Facebook page and posted a casting call. I asked them to send me their headshots, and if they were what I was looking for, I sent them the script and had them send me audition tapes. I think I received about 50 audition tapes, and I was able to narrow it down to one actor actor, Lorenzo, who had the exact range I needed. So my actors are locked in, my locations are locked in, I picked out all the gear I wanted to use, which was the Red Weapon 6K we have here at the office, and then I rented a bunch of cine lenses and decided to shoot the whole film handheld. I love, love that heavy handheld look. Then I met with our wardrobe lady, Shailene, and gave her my vision and the character outfits, and we were able to collaborate and go back and forth and create the exact look I was going for. She slayed the wardrobe. And then once everything's locked in, all the pieces are arranged, it was time to schedule the shoot. Production didn't run perfectly. It never does, but I think for this it was pretty close. I had incredible help from my team, the actors knew what they were doing, and everyone was just having a good time. Because it was my very first short film, I went into this knowing that there would be mistakes that I'd make mistakes, and that there would be things that I would learn, and honestly, I think that mindset changed everything about how the production went. The shots we were getting were beautiful, the wardrobe looked incredible on film, and the cast was on point. The hardest part of production for me was something that I just need to take the time to practice and get better at, and that's directing. Having a vision in your head and then putting that vision into a screenplay and then getting the actors to deliver that vision is a very hard thing to do and something I wish I would have prepped better for. And the day production ended, I actually started reaching out to some directors for advice and taking some online classes about directing and I'm really excited to apply those things that I've learned plus the experience from Essence to my next film. Editing honestly was awesome. It's so cool seeing your original idea that you thought of at a lake house go from an idea to a screenplay to a set to footage on your timeline, it's, it's the coolest thing ever. But it was definitely an entirely new learning experience and I had to change a lot about my post-production workflow for this project. It just wasn't like the usual projects I'm doing every day. I ended up consulting with multiple red experts and color experts to learn how to color grade red footage the right way. And if you're interested in how I achieved the colors I did, I put a tutorial in our course that breaks down the process step by step. I also contracted a composer who scored the entire film with a custom track that I think made the film exactly what it was. The track is beautiful to me. And again, having someone who knows how to create emotion through music was exactly what this film needed because I couldn't do that on my own. The film also needed a lot of Foley. So we set a day aside at our office and recreated all the sounds and movements that the short film needed. I then consulted with professional sound designers and recording mixers to help the film sound professional. Audio is half of the viewing experience. And going back to the big thing I learned, I can't wear all the hats. There are people out there who can do things way better than me, and having them help on the short and provide their value, their expertise, elevated the film beyond anything that I could have done alone. And then after watching the film back 500, 1000 times, whatever, I knew it was ready and Essence is now 
live. So as you can see guys, a lot went into this short film and while it was a fun, crazy, fast paced and stressful production process, I really enjoyed making it and I cannot wait to make more. We're planning on releasing a new narrative filmmaking mini course this fall once I've done two or three films and I expect each of my next few films to be completely different than Essence because I want new challenges and I want to learn new ways to make the best film I possibly can. So stay tuned for that and guys again, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't watched Essence already, it would mean the world to me if you did. I'm very proud of it. So go to our channel and check it out. And while you're there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you guys have any further questions, please let me know.